Perfect. Well, again, welcome everyone to this month edition of the Leadership Academy Short Takes. What I'm going to be doing is just doing a quick review of the Soil Conservation District uh, Google Drive as a great resource, not only for SCD employees, but supervisors as well. Um, hopefully right now, can everybody see my screen? It should have a Google Drive, Soil Conservation Districts and different tabs on it. Yeah, I'm going to take silence as yes, Hannah, that is what we are looking at right now. Cool. The tab I will direct you up to is over here on the right hand corner. It's the SCD elections tab. And when you click in on that, there's all sorts of paperwork that and files that Jody Delosier uploaded on here uh, before she left. And so this is a great resource. I know some of us are audio learners, others kind of need to see things visually or read through stuff to totally understand what's going on. And so this is just a great resource for folks to kind of go in and you can see the files that you're gonna need. And there's a detailed letter from Jody also talking about stuff. So this is just, again, I wanted to highlight this resource for folks and I'll go ahead and add this into the chat while Leanne is talking everything. So, but without further ado though, I will go ahead and introduce our speaker for today. Um, this is Leanne Oliver and she is the election specialist with the North Dakota Secretary of State's office. Um, hopefully I got that right, Leanne. That is exactly right, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And I was really excited to have Leanne with us. Again, I think it's just nice. You can hear things from me. You can read a letter that Jody wrote, but sometimes it's just really nice to talk to the person who does this day in and day out. And so thank you so much, Leanne, for taking the time to speak with us all. I know that supervisors and SCD employees across the board are really going to appreciate the information you have to share with us. So I'm going to go ahead and let you take things and run with it. Do I need to give you access to, do you have a presentation that I need to give you access to share the screen with or? Um, I don't like what you showed. Uh, good morning, everyone, by the way, what you showed, um, what she put up there as far as like the petition and the forms and that sort of thing. That's basically, um, what I need to talk about. Um, the only addition I think I, or I didn't see was the campaign finance part of it, but I can, it's not difficult. I could just, it's in the same place and I can just visit about that. But if it's easier to know where to go to, I can also share my screen, share my screen, whatever you'd like. I think this is, <clears throat> you're from here. I'll just kind of visit with you guys at first yeah. and then we'll see. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. Again, good morning. Um, I guess what I want to start off with is you guys know that the office is only on the general election, not on the primary, and that everyone is required to collect signatures. And the amount is, of course, no fewer than 25 or more than 300. So trust me, I've never understood the the signature requirement threshold for that is just like, why would you collect 300 when, when your minimum is 25? But anyway, that's what the law says. So that's where we're at. And they're also turned into your county auditor. So if the, uh, the district covers more than one, in some cases does county, so you would turn it into the county auditor where you reside. Um, Along with that petition, and I saw that there was links to that, along with the petition, there's the two other forms, the um, affidavit and the statement of interest. And the affidavit is notarized, and that's just stating um, your your information plus how you want your name to appear on the ballot, that sort of thing. And the statement of interest um, is not notarized. It used to be, but it's you just fill it out. It's just so that there's no... Uh, you're not a big part of something that's going to be a conflict for your job as soil conservation supervisor. Pretty, pretty easy. But those two forms, along with your petition, all have to be into the county auditor's office this year by four o'clock on September 3rd. It would have been September 2nd, but that's Labor Day. So it moves to September 3rd and it has to be in there by four, not 402. I know it sounds weird, but 
I've had legislative candidates miss coming in at 402 <laughs> and they had to be on the ballot as a write-in. I mean, we stand at the door and if we, we see people come when we're like, get here. So I know it's probably not that big of a thing, um, but it could be. Just wanted to let you know, make sure it's at four. Um, let's see, you can, oh, as far as the forms, I'm just gonna be giving you those. You can get them from your county auditor. You can download them from our site. You can give me a call. I can send you a link to them, whichever. That works just fine. Um, the thing would be if you do happen to miss the deadline or you decide after, hey, I want to run for this, you can run as a write-in. There's no forms needed for that. Uh, the toughest part is just to get out there and campaign to say, write in my name and fill in the oval before my name and that's all you need and you just have to have one more vote than if someone's on the ballot. The other thing that I get as far as questions, um, a big thing would be what do I have to look for for names on the petition? Obviously they have to reside within your, your district that you're running in. They have to be 18 or older, a U.S. citizen and have lived there for 30 days. The thing on the petition itself, so on the petition pages, you just have to be diligent when you get signatures to make sure they're filled in correctly. And you're gonna have no problem. Make sure that the person dates it. There's a, a column for printing a name and for a signature. So make sure they do both. And then as far as the address, this is a sticky part. We're looking through thousands of names now for the statewide uh, petitions that have come in. Um, just their their full address. So if there's a directional on it, like First Street Southwest, if there's an apartment number or something, just make sure that that's included. Because I have seen um, in some cases in cities where... Um, they didn't put a zip code or they didn't put an apartment number and, and the filing officer didn't count it. So if you're diligent in watching that, you're not going to need much more than 25. I would always get, you know, a little bit more, but not, uh, you wouldn't need a hundred if you're, if you're doing a good job watching them. Um, as far, that would be the only thing about getting on the ballot, you can start now. Um, campaign finance, there might be some cases that's that the uh, you didn't know that you had to file it, but you do. Even if there's nothing collected, there's a spot on there that says uh, nothing. It's a small box mark, nothing, nothing to report, but everyone has to report. It's a paper, it's on paper. And it is again filed with your county auditor. And for this year, I'll just tell you the the coverage dates. It goes from the beginning of the year through September 26th. And so that's just if you get contributions in order to run, if you're buying signs or putting them up or sending a mailing or something like that, that's usually what it is. And so it goes through September 26th and you can file it with your county auditor from September 27th to October 4th. Anytime you can mail it in, that sort of thing. So it's just something to keep in mind if you have questions on it. Again, call me. Uh, if you if, it, if nobody gives you over $200, it's again, not it's just a zero mark. Otherwise, you just need their name and address and the amount that they gave. But it's it's not super difficult, I don't think. Um, That's basically the questions that I get is, is um, who do I turn it into? What forms do I need? Are they notarized? And do I have to tell people if I receive any money to run? Those are the the big questions, at least for that, for the Soil Conservation Office. But I don't know if someone else has any other questions that they had that I'm not aware of. I can sure try and help. When you were talking about the write-in and mm -hmm. he's going out and campaigning, is there anything that they can or cannot be doing as they are com campaigning for themselves? Um, no, I would just stay um, away from like political subdivision buildings, you know, um, just because it's a sticking point. Some people are 
don't care. Some people are like, they can't be there. They can't be there. You know, that sort of thing. But the, the biggest thing is just to, to let people know, I mean, that it, it's a lot more work to write as a write-in. Say, I'm running for this office. There will be a line on the ballot where you can write in my name. Please, you know, please do so and fill in the oval because they do have to fill in the oval before uh, your name when they write it in for that, for it to count. Awesome. Well, again, if anybody has specific questions for Leanne, go ahead and put them in the chat. I know you hand, you um, held up a couple different pick, um, oh, sure. forms, Leanne, and I'm wondering if we could, I can share my screen again and I can, yes. we can show them a Which better ones? image of what those forms mm -hmm. look like, if that mm -hmm. sounds good. Um, so we'll again do this. Okay, so again, we're in the Soil Conservation District Resource Google Drive, which I include the link in the chat, and I click on the SCD election tab. And like Leanne said, you can go on the Google Drive, you can, we'll also send out the link to the website for all these forms and documents too, just so people have options. Um, which one would you like to start off with, Leanne? Okay, so- I'll be your um, banner. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> okay, um, let's see, the two, well, we can do the petition. How about if we do that? Because that's going to be the first um, thing that you're going to take out. So on that top part, you're just going to area affected. You know, is it going to be the Mouse River Soil Conservation? That's what you would put, your name, your mailing address, and then, um, one second. It's basically the office you're seeking is soil conservation supervisor, your district number or district name. Um, you're, that's basically for like a legislative district or uh, legislative district one or two. So that can be left blank. You don't have to worry about that. And of course, you are a no party office. <laughs> and you would mark general. And the date of the election is November 5th. And then you skip obviously the governor part and then you just go to that next page. I don't know where that's what I mean about the signatures. Just make sure they date it, they print and they sign it. And then make sure that there's uh, a street, city, state, zip code. The thing on here, you can't use a PO box because you can't live in one. So that doesn't really put you in uh, a district or not. So it would have to be um, an actual physical address. So that's that's the one that you have to, and you can make copies. Uh, the, another question I get, can I just fill out one first page and then make three, four, five copies of the signature page and staple them together? Yes, you can. Just make sure when you turn them in that they are stapled because the filing officer is not supposed to count any loose uh, pages of petitions. And then your other two forms, if there's any questions on that, I'd be happy to answer them. And then the other one is the um, affidavit, the one right in front of the petition. Yep. And that is simply saying, again, what's your name, mailing addresses, what you're running for. And then the big thing, if you scroll down just a little here, it says ballot name requested. That is going to put... Um, if it's Elizabeth Smith, but you want it to be Liz or Beth, um, that's where you would put it. Because then that is what the county auditor is going to put into the system, which then goes on the ballot, which people will see. And then the last one, all three, the statement of interest or the petition, the affidavit, and then the last one listed over here on the bottom, the statement of interest. Those three forms make up a complete filing. And this is the one uh, a lot. Everybody, as you can see, a lot of people have to fill this out. And again, it's name, um, spouse, if you have that, the office you're seeking. And then I can tell you on the, yep, perfect. On the next page, occupation, the instructions are there. We kind of we kind of changed this 
mix it up a little bit. Um, so it's the third page that I am that I want to show because I get the most questions on that. Okay, so this is where you're asking about. Uh, they're like, oh, do I have to put that I'm part of this or part of that? I see people go as far as I'm the secretary at the church. I do Boy Scouts, whatever. If you want to, fine. It, that doesn't uh, matter. If there's nothing that you are a part of that has anything to do with uh, the soil conservation supervisor spot, just put NA in there so that they know that you saw that area and that that there's just nothing there. So instead of leaving it blank, it's just nice to put um, NA in there. And that's the biggest thing in there. There's, a, I think there's a section D uh, and you're gonna know, no, right here. If you're a director or, or a fiduciary relationship, someone you're either gonna know you are or you're not. And so uh, it's like, I rarely see anything in that spot, but if you are fine, um, if not, again, just put NA and then just remember to sign and date it. Perfect. Are there any other documents you want to go over? Um, that second one, the 2023-25, um, yeah, right there. That is simply just uh, kind of a synopsis of uh, <clears throat> on the left side under the the director, you're going to see scroll down to soil conservation. Oh, keep going ah, right there. Soil right there. That's going to say what you need, how long your term is. And then you go to general election. It's going to say these are the forms, the three forms that we just talked about, the filing date. Um, it's going to talk about running as a write-in candidate in the general. You don't have to file anything. You just have to go out and campaign. And the campaign finance, you uh, it's considered a county, multi-county office. So you do have a uh, disclosure statement there. And, and then it just takes you to all the uh, code sections if you want to know that. And then it has, like my number is the uh, 328 If you have any questions, you can... Uh, give me a call there and I will help you. Um, so if I click on this website link, will that show, like pull up that financial? It's supposed to. Like, try it. It's supposed to. I always <laughs> want to say, yeah. Uh, oh, here we oh, go. Let's see. And so <clears throat> your forms are campaign financial disclosure forms that vary for down, 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 down. Keep going down. Those are your forms, but then your campaign finance is right there. That one. So if you click on there, that is going to be your paper form. And if you see under section um, C, where I was saying, if you just have a little square, if there's nothing to report, it says no reportable contributions for reporting period. All you would do is click that little box, sign and date it, and you are good. The bing bada boom. Yeah, yeah. not not too hard. <laughs> okay, awesome. Well, I um, I will go ahead and I'll add this link to the okay. chat as well for folks, and we'll get um that form updated. Um, I'll stop stop sharing here for a second and everything. But yeah, uh, is there anything else that was important to go over, Leanne? Uh, I'm just, I was just trying kind of preparing for it going, what questions do I get from candidates, that sort of thing. And it's basically, I, I think I covered it. It's just when, where, and what do I need and, and how much, you know, and well, what are they going to throw out? How many extra do I need? And like I said, if, if you just, People should know their complete address. Just have them put it down and, and they'll be good. They'll be good. Awesome. Yeah. I think I wanted to also just remind folks that if you just end up having something happens and you wanted to be reelected and you didn't get your paperwork in and you didn't get your name on the ballot and so on and so forth and there's still an open position um you can districts can still fill those positions um they can appoint people uh when you want to appoint someone to those positions you do need to um, let our office know so then they would get approval from the sscc it's just um 
kind of the fine detail Process. stuff. Yes. And then um, then districts are able to go ahead and appoint someone to um, take in or fill that position on a, a, just a rolling basis and everything like that. So just Again, uh, this is my first time explaining that whole process. And so if it is a question or a concern, just reach out to either me or Carrie Johnson, or hopefully we'll have a um, program director here pretty shortly so that they can handle these types of questions. But don't worry, we'll 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 get it all figured out together. Um, Allison Stearns, can you just remind folks again when are all elected positions required to be filled? Oh, you're muted, Leanne. Yep, Sorry. I'm like, okay, I'm on mute. I was trying to find it there. Um, yes, I mean, there they are. If there's, if no one gets written in, no one, uh, if no one files, and let's even say people are are written in, it's an elected spot. If those people written in decline it they they don't want it then you do go to the vacancy which then is filled by the board but yes it's an elected spot so there there doesn't there has to be bodies in there <laughs> does that help answer your question allison thanks for asking a question mm -hmm. i appreciate it okay perfect are there any other questions out there for folks What I will do is, like I said, I did record this. We will be sending out a link to the recording for people to view later. So go ahead and share it with other supervisors and just let them know, like, here's a quick review of what needs to get done between um, now and election time. And, or I should, September yeah. 3rd. Yes, is, September 3rd. Yeah. Now and September. Four, four yeah. o'clock. At four. <laughs> And yeah, oh. and just feel free to don't be nervous or anything. If you have questions, just give us a call. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much, Leanne. Don't worry, yeah. folks. We'll send out links to the different sites that we referenced, as well as a link to the recording. And uh, if Leanne's comfortable with it, we'll include her contact information sure. or reach out to your local auditor. That also yep. is a great resource oh. to help answer some of these questions and maybe folks might feel a little bit more comfortable with a familiar face. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. All well, right. you guys all have a great day. Yes. You too, Leanne. Thank you. Thank everybody. you.